Hello, my friends. Welcome back to the Cottage Kitchen at the Elliott Homestead. It's late in the afternoon. We're going over to some friend's house for dinner. My contribution is going to be dessert, and I thought it would be the perfect time to show you our homemade honey caramel corn. Let's cook. So we're gonna be making this naturally sweetened dessert from scratch, but it's really simple. A lot of people are intimidated by caramel and they're intimidated by making popcorn as I knock it over on the stovetop, but you don't need to be. All you need is a big hot pan. So this is my canning pot that has many uses, one of which is my homemade popcorn pot. And then I have some organic popcorn kernels that I get from Azur Standard every month because we eat a lot of popcorn. And now you need an oil. So I'm gonna use just a couple of tablespoons of an olive oil. What oil does is it distributes heat evenly. And so when I put my popcorn kernels in there, it's gonna help them to not burn. It's gonna to help to spread the heat evenly over the whole pan. So just a few tablespoons to coat the bottom of your hot pan. I am gonna use about a cup and a half of popcorn kernels straight in. If you're not sure how many to use, always err on the side of using too few, because if you overcrowd your pan, they won't pop correctly. You need to keep these moving just a little bit. This is one of the hardest parts. It's just babysitting the kernels a little bit, making sure that they don't burn. You can give it a shake, pick it up and shake it, and that'll help them to kind of even out at the bottom. Now, while these are going to pop, I'm gonna start making my caramel, which is really simple. Cup of butter. Yes, a cup. This is dessert after all. Cup of butter, cup of honey, cup of sweetener. In my case, I'm gonna use succinant or rapidura. Now, what this is, is sugar cane that's been pressed, the juice has been dehydrated, and that is what this is. Unrefined, unbleached, unfiltered, has a ton of flavor and works really well to kind of add a depth to the caramel. Super good. And then I have some of our very own honey from our bees. This is last year's harvest. I know it doesn't look super pretty in the jar, but the honey is really, really good. So a cup of this as well. Don't forget to stir. I'm gonna get this caramel going here. I got my helper to stir it because there is a little bit of stirring involved. So you'll notice that I'm kind of eyeballing my measurements and that's totally okay. Can you give that popcorn a stir, Juge? You can pull a chair over if you need to. Can you move it around a little bit in there? Okay. Okay, Julia has been stirring the popcorn and it's starting to pop. At this point, you need to put a lid on because it will go everywhere. Give it a little shake to even it out on the bottom. And often I turn the heat down to low. That'll be enough to keep it popping, but not so much that it burns. Look at it go. You wanna move your chair over here? Caramel corn is one of those desserts that just makes people happy. And there is certainly a place in our kitchens for beautiful galettes and mousses and all kinds of fancy things. And then there's a place to just throw down some munchy, good, sweet, and salty food. This is one of those foods that just makes people happy. And the friends that we're going to visit tonight have a lot of kids as well. So I'm expecting many happy faces when I show up with this big plate of popcorn. So the popcorn is going to pop until you hear that noise stop. That means it's ready and you can just turn off the heat at that point. But meanwhile, we have our honey and our sugar and our butter melting in this pan over there. And that needs to get really hot. So we're gonna bring it up to a boil and then try to keep it at a low boil for five minutes. And this is gonna help all those sugars to kind of caramelize, melt together, and then get really sticky. It feels hotter on my hands. Do you want me to do this part? Wow, 
that's popping a lot. Mm hmm that all right you can hear the popcorn now it's pretty much stopped popping and I don't want it to burn so if you need to do another batch just dump this one out and do the same thing again oh we're still going a little bit we're still going a little bit Kamikoto is the sponsor of this video here on the Elliott Homestead and once again we are so excited to get to share this wonderful company with you these are the knives that we use in our kitchen. They're made using a traditional Japanese technique used by Japanese craftsmen, and it takes years to master and to make these knives from Japanese steel. They're individually inspected, come with a lifetime guarantee, and are delivered to you in a beautiful ash wood box that makes them ideal for storage or travel. These knives are used in Michelin star kitchens around the world for good reason. They're so incredibly sharp and so wonderfully well-balanced. Kamikoto has been kind enough to offer Elliott Homestead viewers a discount. So visit kamikoto.com forward slash the Elliott to get $50 off your purchase of Kamikoto knives. But check this out. See how it's sort of risen up and it's gotten a light in color and all bubbly and wonderful. I'm stirring it because I don't want it to burn. Sukhanant is, it has the molasses still intact. It hasn't been separated into molasses and white sugar. It's a little bit more inclined to burn. So I just like to keep an eye on it. Keep it knocked back. And once this has simmered and boiled and gotten all, all caramely and melty and good for a solid five minutes, then we're gonna add in some salt, some vanilla, and some baking soda right before are you excited? <laughs> All right, I think our popcorn is good. Do you think we're gonna need another batch? Maybe we'll just start with one for now. I always love the types of recipes where you can take something maybe that you grew up eating or that you love to enjoy on occasion, something like caramel corn, but you can make a much better version of it yourself at home with good butter and good salt and good popcorn and good sugars and honey and that just brings me that much more joy because it is a special treat it's not something that we eat all the time but when you can do that and do it at home and do it from scratch and do it with good ingredients that just it increases the enjoyment of it that much more smelling good huh smelling like caramel Okay, we just need a few more ingredients to finish our caramel corn. I told you that this was easy. I have some vanilla extract, some baking powder, and some good sea salt. Now, I tend to like my caramel corn on the salty side because I think it really counters the sweet very well. But we're gonna shut the heat off underneath the caramel, add all of these ingredients, mix it all together, and then pour it over our caramel corn. It is very hot, so be very careful. And as much as I love having little hands help in the kitchen. This is something that an adult should do because that caramel is like molten lava. And I know this because I've burnt myself doing it before, so be careful. All right, it's been five minutes now, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn my heat off. The first thing to go in is gonna be about a teaspoon of vanilla extract, and it'll bubble up, don't worry. I'm gonna add about the same of salt, maybe just a little bit more. Give that a stir. Oh, that's smelling like dessert now. And then a teaspoon of baking powder. We're gonna just, oops, kind of rough measure it here. In she goes. You can see it turns a nice light color and gets all big and puffy. That's exactly what we want. It's almost like a caramel marshmallow at this point. All right, look at this. It's like caramel, marshmallow, salty vanilla, and it took five minutes. 
have my pop popcorn here. In she goes. Got to get it all. Not leaving any morsel behind. These pans are hot though, so please be careful. Okay, toss to coat, as they say. Now at this point, you have two options. You could eat it super hot with your hands and it'll be all warm and sticky from that honey, or you can bake it. And when you bake it, it gets a little toasted, it gets a little crispy, and it will stay crispy at room temperature for longer. So it'll last for a couple of days like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and bake mine just by spreading it on a parchment lined baking tray and baking it at about 275, 300 for 20 or 30 minutes. Keep an eye on it because it will burn if your oven is too hot or if you cook it for too long. It should just be nice and toasted on the edges. Look at that. Heaven, I'm excited. All right. Here's what we got. I'm gonna spread this on two different trays. I made a big old batch. Lots of happy people will be eating this for dessert. Isn't that beautiful? And so simple. So into the oven it goes. Good? You can come back in about 10 or 15 minutes, give it a little toss, make sure it all toasts beautifully and evenly, and then enjoy. Yeah, baby. See how dark and golden that has gotten from that little bit of extra time? Now you can certainly eat it like this fresh if you don't have time to bake it, but you can see the difference. That color is flavor, and it will help it to crisp up. So this batch is gonna go in next. And this batch is gonna get transferred to a bowl ready to go over to our friends for supper. If you would like to learn more about cooking recipes from scratch, make sure you check out the link below to the cooking community. We've been running this cooking community for over four years now, and this is the place that we spend a lot of time in recipe development and sharing ingredients from our farm and in teaching other home cooks how to cook better and how to fall in love with cooking more. So I hope you love this recipe. Happy eating. Cheers.